Bartians. 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 Hello. Hello. Hey, Stuart. Hello, Barry. And of course, <gasps> special Mr. guest. It's bloody Gannon, isn't it? Hello, everybody. How are you? Mm, I've been called special guest. It's nice. As opposed to that twat. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, it was 50 50. It was and we 50, cost 50 dice. I appreciate like, that. Welcome to the, the, <laughs> is it the, is it the, the, the watered down version of Barton's <laughs> yeah. that dilute to taste. This is basically the same room we filmed everything <laughs> else in. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's full of ghosts. So it's just like old times. Yeah. Mm. It's and been on, so long ago since we last filmed uh, yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Literally yesterday. We had a cracking pizza afterwards, eh? We oh. did. Oh. That was phenomenal. That was, that was a good I'm place. still enjoying that pizza in my mind. <laughs> I'm still chewing it in my I brain. I was worried you were going to say in your stomach. I was going to say, probably see a doctor. With my something. intestinal complications, it wouldn't surprise me. God, we got that A couple of guys struggled yeah. with the pizza last night. I think it was Izzy and Eli. They had the chili. Uh -huh. I, um, they're in a bad way. I haven't, I haven't heard from them today, so I'm wondering if... Uh, Linton, actually, Editor Linton, poured like loads of that chili, oh, the chili oil, oil over. Yeah. Yeah. It was swimming in it, wasn't it? It was, it like, was like a yeah. soup bowl. It was like a little yeah. pond Yeah, of chili sauce. But he had no problem with it, and he's, yeah. I've been in contact with him. And Linton was very passionate about the dip situation yes. of a pizza. He was like, I would never have a dip for my pizza. He's very passionate. And I was like, yeah. wow. You know? I, I didn't know he had strong, strong feelings on dip. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. That's it. Yeah. He's like a dip get, warrior. We didn't, I've never really hung out with him socially, but, you know, now I know he's a dip. Yeah. He's anti-dip. Yeah. He's like, what are you dipping that in? I mean, it was pesto, so it's a bit different. Uh, but, I mean, I've had a pizza before, a sour cream, barbecue sauce, like, all that stuff. I mean, some of it, like, uh, you go to Domino's, you get yeah. that uh, garlic and herb oh, dip. That That's pretty oh, good. I'm bored of that, though. Oh, Every time. It's like, yeah. give me something different. That is the thing. It is overused. They have a nice funny mustard one. It's quite nice. Yeah, or a nice... Uh, like barbecue, yeah. Give me something yeah. different. Yeah. A board of garlic oh, and whatever. That, uh, spicy sweet stuff. Uh, buffalo sauce. Oh, buffalo. Yeah, Frank's hot wing sauce. Yeah. A good dip of that. That's oh, yeah. oh, a hot sauce would be nice as well. Do you know where do you, where do you stand? Because you're culinary on stuffed crust pizza. Because I think it's an abomination idea. Oh uh, yeah, I don't like it. I think it's one of the things that you look at on the menu and you're like, oh yeah, that looks insane. Cheese, mm. layer it on. But then when you get it, by the time sometimes you do get it, it's kind of gone cold again anyway. So it's literally you in a cold cheese yeah. stream. This um, is it. I have like one slice. Of I'm so glad I got the best thing ever. Yeah. Half of the second. Oh. Because mm. oh. you know how they make that, right? They literally have the crust and they'll put a cheese string effectively of mozzarella yeah. in it and then they fold it over, seal That's... it in, bake it. So it's just melted mozzarella within the, mm. the, and the pizza base. hot so. dogs. They put hot dogs in the... Oh, That's yeah. exactly what I was yeah. about to mention. Yeah. I had one once. Yeah, it was like a massive hot dog. Yeah, run. and they did a and burger again, one as well. The, um, yeah. One bite. So, oh, amazing. Yeah. Second... Slice, no, this is too much. It's because your body, I think, begins to notice the artifice of it. Mm. And you go, oh, this is not real meat or cheese yeah. or anything. The, this, this is hate. This is a bad time on the toilet tomorrow <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> that's what it says yeah. to me. And that's where I'm thinking that Eli and Izzy are possibly at today. Because uh, uh, Izzy actually had it on her lips and she was like, like, you know, when, you know, when it gets it there, you're like, ooh. Eli had a full sweat on. Yeah. But to be fair, <laughs> Eli's out of shape and he mostly has a full sweat <laughs> on. So yeah. I, I feel his pain. Yeah. So we have oh, Paul dear. here and obviously we really want to get into ghost talk. I know. Mm. Hashtag ghost talk, maybe. Hashtag ghosts. But I think we'll start with a shot call. Let's have a shot so, for old times sake. Yeah. Oh, so let's play, let's play my the My favourite theme. part of bar We've got a shot call <laughs> theme now. Wait for it. Yeah. Oh, no. Can you guess the inspiration behind two things coming together for that song? Uh, free copyright music and <laughs> uh, an open web browser. <laughs> well, <laughs> normally it would be. That is actually a custom piece. I oh, believe. yeah. yeah. It, ne it needs a fart sound on the end. I hate to <laughs> yeah, be yeah. crass, well, we but it needs like <laughs> pompous <laughs> and then it needs a... <laughs> yeah. At the end. Well, it's supposed to be a fusion of Back to the Future and Star Wars. Is it? Yeah, so Ooh. the orchestra part of it is the... Dur, 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 and then obviously the... Dur, 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 dur of Star Wars. So, yeah. oh. Right, this is a very important one. I hope you are uh, holding on to your hats. Where is it from? From the Eastern Daily Press, oh. one of my local newspapers. Yeah. Hot air balloon lands on edge of field. Wow. What I like about that is it almost sounds like a like a Jim John Moosh kind of movie. You can, <laughs> you can, you can, it's it's up there. I want to see the Wes Anderson version. Yeah it's, yeah, it's got that kind of nice whimsical feel to it as a story title. So what's the <laughs> the meat and potatoes with this? <laughs> the first line is amazing. Motorists in Norfolk have had a close up view of a hot air balloon coming down to land. Wow. I imagine they might have seen that before. That's not like oh, the most. The inflatable <laughs> beast lands. 
<laughs> we must prepare the sacrifice. It Bring does, your daughters. It has brought us the gift of fire. <laughs> At around 7.30am on Friday, May the 4th, a hot air you. balloon. Yep, just in case you want to go nice. back in time to see it. Star Wars reference for you. Yeah. yeah. We, we appreciate Marty, it. we got to go back. <laughs> it's May the 4th. <laughs> I want to see that balloon, Marty. <laughs> do, 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 do. The hot air balloon, which had set off from Old Buckingham Airfield just an hour beforehand, right. was seen landing on the edge of a field near Mulbarton. Well, the distinctive red balloon was spotted by several people and caused traffic to come to a halt. Directed by air currents, as opposed to being steered in the traditional sense, hot air balloons travel wherever the wind takes them. Traditional sense? What does it mean by that? Um, I mean, somebody with the steering wheel. Going, rah, rah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't you have to make that control. noise if you're flying anything. Rah, rah, I don't even know hot air balloons have steering wheels. Uh, no, they don't. No. That's no. the problem. Oh. They don't. Yeah. So they're it's... just basically telling people how balloons work in the yeah. article. That's just exactly to pad right. It out. right. Yes, okay. exactly correct. Uh, the basket is what puts me off. Yeah. Like, I don't know. If it was more of like a, a bucket, a plastic bucket, maybe a bit more. Cause... Nice. What if it was one of those yeah. plastic buckets in the shape of a castle to make sandcastles Yes. With? Or if it was in like in the shape of a tube with maybe like wings on the side yeah. and seating. Oh, and that's uh, nice. I like yes. that. And some sort of really powerful engine yeah, to, to get, get, get you off the ground. Yeah. yeah, I think I prefer that version of a well, hot air balloon. When you think about yeah. what an aeroplane is, it is literally a bench in the sky, isn't it? That's yeah. the most beautiful and profound thing yeah. I think I've ever heard you Next say. Next time you look up at a plane, just yeah. imagine that it didn't have any like things on and it was like a you know like a, a glass bottom Wind. boat in yeah, uh, yeah. you go on holiday imagine they did a glass like I don't know plane there wasn't there such a thing or talk of such a I thing I think just some panels on the walkway yeah. yeah but the whole thing if you no. look up there'd be a man with his steering wheel or yeah. you know, like um, Wonder Woman's invisible plane yeah. Yeah. and there'd be yeah. loads of others like trying to tuck into their like teeny little in-flight meal and their you know, under-baked bread roll like, yeah yeah like, that's horrible good, really. isn't there's something, something creepy about that a spokesperson for Virgin Balloon Flights Yes, there's more. Mm. Said our highly skilled pilot, who is, you just said you can't control anything. So what does that mean? Yeah, just the wind. There's yeah. no pilot on a balloon. It's like sailing. Yes, yeah. it is. Like you can't control the elements. I have friends who are a professional hot air balloon race guys who go in races. Racing it's like, balloons. It's like trying to get on the right wind. It's like sailing, basically. That's what you think about it. Yeah. No. They call them wind riders in, in the industry. But I remember windsurfing wow. on summer camp when I was at secondary school, and they were like, no, you can do it. You have to like spin the thing around to like use the wind again. Oh, I, I just kept and going one way, really school. freaking fast. <laughs> yeah. One way. I never had windsurfing. Did you not go on like, summer camp? You weren't allowed a trimble. <sighs> we went away to Paris and stayed at this YMCA as our class, and um, it, what ended up being was t- uh, you would pair up with someone and pair up with other, and we didn't realise, but there was a shared bathroom. So if you went in, it locked the other side of the door and stuff like that. But we, we went in there within about 10 minutes, um, someone had come through our side of our bedroom as we were still unpacking our bits and this guy had his pants around his ankles another kid in our school and he was like help me <laughs> and we were like what and somehow he'd got so seasick on the boat before he'd still had motion sickness and he managed to do a poo and missed the entire toilet <laughs> and it was on the floor like curled up like a poo emoji and we were like oh my god what do we do and so he picked up so you put some big googly eyes on yeah, it yeah that's right and copyrighted it it's been nice being a pot yeah. it's like, that's yeah. what I just can't so, deal with it <laughs> <laughs> you got the bog brush thing, right? And uh, picked it up, and the actual base that it sat on fit flush around the poo, and then we slid it around the backside. And to this day, it could still be there in the YMCA in uh, in Calais. Actually, that was well. Yeah. If anybody works at the YMCA in Calais, <laughs> yeah. don't look behind the toilets. It's the yeah. ransom for his arrest. Yeah. We'll sort it out. <laughs> yeah. Should we have some ghost chat? Let's. Oh, are we, are we yeah. shouted out? Um, yeah, there's nothing much. Uh, a highly skilled pilot who has been flying high air balloons in Norfolk for 25 years was in full control at all times. And all of his 16 passengers had a wonderful flight. What a boring story. Ballooning mm. is fully weather dependent. Our pilots will expertly assess specialist weather forecasts a few hours before any flight in order to establish whether or not it is safe to fly. It's a story if those people died. It's not a story if they didn't. It's just yeah. a day out. It's a yeah. balloon up in the sky and then landing again. It's, yeah. do you think it's, it's been, what it does. That's an awkward that's more that's more for like tourism. Like they say, let me do a little story about what we do and we'll make it into a thing about yeah. f- f- it landing. Let's give it some sex. Let's let's jazz it up a bit. Yeah. But one of the but sponsored really, yeah. stories recommended by some company is What's it like living on Yarmouth's Middlegate estate? Well, we'll never I imagine you just click on that and it just goes, ah! Oh! <laughs> for an hour. So, let's talk about ghosts. Why? Yeah, bloody ghosts. Like, bloody ghosts, because Mr. Gannon here, yeah. you are, yeah. I believe, for a period, a professional ghost hunter. It, you know what's weird? It's, it's kind of like an oxymoron to be a professional ghost hunter, mm. because there's nothing professional about it. Right. And 
ghosts aren't real. Yeah, I, I was going to say yeah. that is something of a problem. That was my thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. if if you are, say you're a ghost Sorry, hunter, Ryan. but then you admit ghosts aren't real, is that kind of like cancelling each other out? If you want to know the reason why I got into it, outside of obviously my fascination with Ghostbusters, because that's where it stems yeah. from. But so around about 2012, 2013, I, I had a really tough time, and I was like going through. Oh no, it was much earlier than that. Hang on. I want to say maybe 2010. So I was having a really rough time. I was in and out of like um, mental health clinics and things like that. I tried to commit suicide. Sorry to make it real, but it was true. Uh, I had failed. I was in and out of CBT. I was having a really rough time. Jobs weren't going well. Mm. Uh, comedy was not doing too brilliantly either because I was doing stand-up at the time. And uh, after my second suicide attempt, I went to see a doctor and the doctor referred me to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist just to, cut, to boil it all down hmm. you know saw that i was living in a really shitty little room on my own i would go to the my temp job and i would come home into my tiny little it's like a cell was and that in the uk or that was yeah i was living yeah. in north london at the time yeah, yeah. so i was doing that and it was driving me insane and the psychiatrist went you just need to get out and you know if it will help you to meet other people because you're not doing it right now hmm. and so it was like, well, what shall I do? Shall I take up a sport? Shall I maybe go fell walking? Shall I get involved in climbing? Shall I get involved in a library or a local activity? So I went, no. Oh. I went, <laughs> no, I'm going to hit this I'm microphone. Hit the microphone. <laughs> it's like, no. What I thought I'd do was I'd go ghost hunting. And that was because it, when I was in my darkest hours, I was really obsessed with shows like Most Haunted and Ghost Hunters and Ghost Hunters International and Ghost Lab. And the list goes on. Ghost adventures, ghost this, ghost that, ghost hunt. It, it's mad, right? And I was obsessed with those shows, but at the time yeah. there was a rising culture of what that I called like supernatural tourism, where mm. for about 40, 50 pounds, you go on a ghost hunt with quote unquote professional ghost hunters at a haunted location. And you spend like nine till three or four in the morning at this location doing a ghost hunt. So a psychic takes you around the venue, goes, oh, I'm seeing ghosts here and oh, I'm sensing this here. Can you sense that there? And then the ghost hunters go, here's all the equipment that you can use tonight. And usually it's the same stuff you'd see on uh, these safe, self-same shows like Most Haunted. I it haven't be... seen any of those shows. I, okay, what, so, so is there like a like the Ghostbusters have that thing where they like fling it on the floor and it... Poof. No, because that would imply <laughs> oh, that things happen in these shows. Oh. It's... It, Ghost hunting shows are a masterclass in making you watch an hour of nothing on the promise of 30 or even 10 seconds of something. Yeah. And so Most Haunted was the one of its was the first of its kind of that kind of mold because in the 70s and 80s you had your kind of supernatural TV shows and documentaries. Remember that Leonard Nimoy one? Oh, uh, yes, that, that was everywhere, wasn't yeah. it? Yes. And yeah. tell yeah. You know, all those well, kind of yeah. No, but he did a he did a kind <laughs> of ghosts? spooky <laughs> science ghost show in the 70s ah, that yeah. you know. Anyway, so all the tools that these ghost hunters use um, were in the show. So it's things like a, 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 God, a K2 meter. And what that effectively does is it allows electricians to find wires in walls. I've got one it, of them it, from uh, being yeah. yeah, I, I have one, but like yeah. one set up as a ghost busting device. Or yeah. busting, sorry, ghost hunting device. Yeah, because yeah. they just rebranded it. Because so, yeah. the thing is, is that people use them on a, a building site to look for wires when they're drilling or yeah, whatever yeah. so they don't blow. So, but also the same technology, uh, and this is where I can go down a rabbit hole, but basically they believe that ghosts generate electromagnetic frequencies when they come through. They, you know, that, that's part of the, when they say ca batteries on cameras and phones die out when ghosts are nearby, it's because they're drawing the energy to that. appear. Is that when my iPhone's K2... getting less and less battery charge? Yeah, that's it. Ghosts. Yeah. Ghosts yeah. in it. So when you're in a haunted yeah. venue, you've got a K2 meter and it's flashing. It's reading that pulse of uh, EM, I can't remember the bloody word, but anyway, that electromagnetic frequency, yeah, yeah. EMF. So if it's you're in a haunted isn't? location no, KLF. KLF. and it flashes, it means you're either in a room with a ghost or you're in a room with a fuse box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And okay. I, I think Eli mentioned this to me. He's like, wouldn't it be clever if a ghost hid in fuse boxes? You'd never know. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway... You go on these ghost hunts and you get all these toys, you get night vision goggles thing, you get hearing enhancers so you can your hearing's improved by 50 decibels in the dark where you can oh, wave it around. So they really enhance that. So never yeah, yeah. walk up behind a ghost hunter and go, ah! Yeah, I've done that. <laughs> oh! Hilarious. I've also had it done to me. Oh. Hilarious. So you went on that and then from that you kind of got into that and you were like, I want to be a pro or something? Is well, there a, a college that you go to or something? No, or? well, it, I started hanging out with... Um, uh, one particular ghost hunt group that doesn't exist anymore for various boring reasons. Uh, and they said, come along with us because it helps you get out and you can meet new people. And that's what happens. So for weekends, you know, for, for the next year, I would go out and I'd meet them in, you know, the Hellfire Caves or I'd meet them in a, a, an old asylum or I'd meet them in a fort on the seafront or I'd meet them in all these haunted locations and just help them run the nights with all mm. these other people. And so, yeah, for about a year and a half, I 
became a, a, a I don't, I don't even, it's, Ghost Hunting implies I did proper research and study and examination. It was like, no, I more got involved with the tourism side of it where, right. go, you know, weekend ghost hunters would come and hang out and I could be the, oh, follow me, we're going to go down here okay. and this is where... The, and so I, but I was always very sceptical because I think on the, around about in the course of those four or five years, the 150, maybe 200 ghost hunts that I did, I saw wow. maybe... That's a lot. ...five unusual things that I couldn't put down to rational explanation. What were they? So, was it like the, the hand on the shoulder? Or you, no, yeah. well, it was weird. One of them was um, I was in um, a, a fort in Portsmouth, and it was right on. Two things happened that night. So it was right on the coastline. It's obviously where they used to have all the cannons set for when the battalion ships came in. You know, this is 1600s kind of fort. I'm in this closed off room. It's completely black, and I begin to feel like um, static in the air. Which is weird because you know when you get that static feel, you go to, yeah. a, to a balloon. You yeah, get that, felt that. Yeah, like, and then Mr. Majika, like. my palm began to really hurt, like someone was pressing their thumb into my hand. And as I shook it off, I looked at my hand, and a little white dot just went beep like that, and it was bright enough that it lit up my palm so I could see my hand. But then it went, went pitch black again. So that's one thing. Can't explain that again. Not stressing that it's supernatural or proof of anything. Yeah. Just that that happened. And also that same night we were. Um, in a tunnel, and this is like deep, deep on the ground. Same it, night? Yeah. And uh, at around about midnight, we began to hear this kind of b -b boom, b -b -b boom, like fireworks were going off. So we went, hello, is anyone, is, are they doing fireworks tonight? Is it an event going on? No, we can't hear anything. So then I radioed over to the next room, like a couple of meters away. Can you hear that b -b -b boom? And I was like, yeah. no, we can't hear anything. But to us, it was loud. So I recorded it, and I've actually got audio footage of, of this sound, and you can hear wow. this b -b boom going off. And then afterwards, I found out that the room we were in were, was the armory where the cannons were fired. So oh, we imagine that, that what we out. might have yeah. heard was this cannon fire going off. And again, I'm not proving, I'm not stating anything <clears> other than that's what we heard and I recorded it. Now, yeah, it might have been fireworks going off that someone else just didn't hear. Yeah. It might have been, I don't know, pipes banging, but it sounded like gunfire. Wow. And, and it wasn't well, a baboon. Not, no, no baboons, no, no. unfortunately, because yeah. they go... <laughs> <laughs> and I so spot a ghost yeah. baboon. There used yeah. to be a zoo here once. You know nothing about ghost, Barry. <laughs> I know nothing between a ghost cannon and a ghost baboon. <laughs> no, no. Well, well, so, so that's it. So okay. for, for a year and a half, I was doing that, and it got me out of the house, and I got yeah. to new news people, and then I started writing a solo show around my experiences because I was not less interested in the ghosts and more interested in the history of the places we were going to and then the people who would go on these ghost hunts because you think, oh, they're all mentals or they're mm. all odd weirdos. No, it was like hen parties, stag do's, families, mates, Mr. and Mrs. Goggins. It's a bit of a laugh. Just get together with your mates. You yeah. don't see that often. Have a bit of a run, right? Get a bit spooked out by a funny noise. Yeah. Bonding well, experience. A lot blah, of my blah. friends have wanted to go and do like a ghost hunt, but there's like a batch of them that really want to do it. And there's yeah. a batch that would generally so scared because a lot of it's obviously in pitch black and you know yeah. your senses are so enhanced that you're like what the heck and that's it there's also that suggestion because when you yeah. go knowing that oh mm. I could see a ghost yeah. you won't I could see something I could be terrified that already informs your night yeah. and so people sometimes walk away going I didn't see anything you yeah think, no one promised at the beginning of the night you would. In fact, one of the things they often state from group to group is that they go, we can't promise you you're going to see anything tonight. But mm. we'll see. Fingers crossed, everybody. We'll do a Ouija board and we'll do all this rubbish. But yeah, yeah. So they one have a man yes. with a lot of white makeup and a funny hat to just go, ooh, around no. the corner occasionally. I'll be, I'll be honest, in, in the number of groups that I worked with and the number of ghost hunts I did, as far as I'm aware, there was no faking going on. That makes me quite people. happy. I think like when, messing you're, about. when you're in the dark, those senses do enhance. I remember like when I was growing up that I used to have this Hulk Hogan punch bag. I had yeah. weights in the back and you like punched it. But when I was in bed at night, it was pitch black. It looked like a sea lion. Every <laughs> night. Every night. I swear to God, there was a sea lion in my bed and it took me two years to realise it was Hulk Hogan, not that. But the shape of him looked like a, a, sea, a sea lion, lion just, just looking at me. What's more terrifying to know, though? You've got Hulk Hogan in the corner of your room or uh, a sea lion. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was uh, like a, a big... I don't know, they were the, the rage in the 80s. Remember the big inflatable Come thing? Come on, you're all yeah. yeah, I think I had an uh, Incredible Hulk one. Yeah, yeah. and it's just like that. And all you do is like punch it and it goes, ooh, back and forth. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, so that, that's the sea lions. So that's, that's where that began. So I, I started ghost hunting mainly because it was good for, weirdly good for my mental health, got me out the house. It made me feel special because, you know, when you thought you're involved yeah. in something like that and yeah. it's like no one else does this and it's interesting and all these people who are on the, the ghost on that night look up to you 
not in a hero worshipping mm-hmm. way, but in a kind yeah. of you're an expert. So there's but, no pl- planting with it. There was no like, no. oh right, I need to take him past there because no. that's where the fuse board is or anything. No, nothing like yeah. that. I mean, yeah. certainly I didn't do that. And part yeah. most of the people who were part of these groups would straight would state that. If they faked something, then you wouldn't believe yeah. anything real that would happen that night. And regardless of what you may personally believe about ghosts and ghost hunting, most of the people who do it say they're sceptical, but they believe. Mm. But at the same time, that belief is honest. And I think a lot of them genuinely mm. want the people who come along to experience something they've experienced or they want to experience as a result. It's it's a weird kind of group. I don't know. It's not like cult, <laughs> not like cult speak. But, you know, it's got that sense of raw yeah. in this and we're doing something really different and, and we get to feel special because we're doing this really weird niche activity. And I guess in a way, if there's like a group of 10 people, like you've got like oh, 10 chances. Yeah, like, like like you get a chance for one yeah. of them to suddenly just takes one of them to go, did you hear that? Yeah. And yeah. then they're like, they're triggered. Then, and they're like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow. After about doing this for a year and a half, uh, one of the paranormal groups I was working with got approached by a small theatre company to do effectively Most Haunted Live where we'd go to a theatre that would be, quote-unquote, on lockdown. So once the show began, yeah. no one was allowed in and out of the thing, whatever. The so Most Haunted is the, the TV show with Yvette Fielding. With Yvette uh, Fielding, yeah. where they go yeah. ghost hunting. I remember hunting clips and, of it and, and stuff, yeah. Yeah, and it's definitely not a fake show. Okay, yep. <laughs> they definitely yeah. don't Disclaimer. fake anything Ooh, no, on that no, okay. I've, I've heard many stories about how they don't fake I it. I could tell yeah. you stories, mm. but if this episode is one gonna, you want it to go out, I shan't legally be able to tell you. And so we started this tour called Psychic and Science, which is meant to be a kind of live ghost hunt in a haunted theatre, with the audience getting involved with live Ouija boards and tests and ghosts, this, that, and the other. And I was the host. I became the host of it because they were looking for a host. And they said, well, Paul, you've done stand-up and yeah. bits of bobs of TV and radio. Would you like hosting it? So I was like, no one knows who the fuck I am. But all right. How many people did you say? Did you ask this to first? Seven. They all said no. All right, I'll do it then. You know, it's one of these kind of things. Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah. It was in a theatre where people were like, like just at a normal show where they come and sit down, but then you had them standing up, walking around. Like, so eh, that's right. The cool. basic show was I would come out, introduce all the people who were on the show, and that was two ghost hunters who were part of the paranormal group uh, I'd worked with called uh, Denise and, uh, oh, God, I've forgotten her husband's name. That's bad. Anyway. Dennis. Dennis. Um, <laughs> Denise and Dennis. Denise and Dennis. And then there was uh, Richard Felix, who'd been on Most Haunted as the historian, and therefore knew all the backstory to all the haunted locations they were at. And his uh, job yeah. was there was context for the venue we were at at that time. And then finally we had a psychic, and it changed a few times over the course of the run, mm. depending on availability. But we had Chris Conway, and another guy, and Derek Acora, famously. Oh, a few big shows. I've heard he of him. He's the big name one. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Sam as well. Yeah, Sam. Sam. Again, again, uh, I, I reckon I can put this out because it's conjecture, but Sam, his spirit guide. Uh, Sam is a, a spirit, what's oh, a spirit guide? Right, yeah. So to, to help Vodka. spit to the spirits, mm. yeah, to help speak, <laughs> speak to the spirits, yeah. Derek Akora has a psychic spirit guide who helps translate ghost talk. Okay. And, and this isn't a physical person. Okay, okay. business manager. I believe <laughs> it's meant to be like an ancient Native American who somehow lives in Liverpool when they met... <laughs> But, didn't think that one through, did he? Oh, I'm still in the one from Waynesville too. <laughs> T-Hawk from Super Street Fighter. Oh. Yes, yeah. like a Native American, but he's actually Mexican, you see. So okay. you never yeah, know. Yeah. You never know. So um, the story goes is that for some reason this spirit guide's called Sam. And we're like, where did Sam come from? But people in the know know that Derek Accord's, Accord's favourite movie is Ghost with Patrick Swayze. And what's the character called? in Ghost that he plays. What, you mean the one oh. called Sam? Yeah, Sam, that one. yeah, that's right. So yeah. there's people who go, oh, when he invented this spirit guide, he called it Sam based on his favourite film, Ghost. So there you go. Right. My God. So, like, didn't Derek Cora <laughs> upset the production staff when they kind of outed him as a fake or something? What was this? It was a massive setup. I mean, yeah. it gets a bit... Um, he said, she said. Mm. But apparently when Most Haunted kicked off and became a huge success... Mm. Is, is um, it big, right? Yeah. yeah it's still it was, going now? It, was, it is it still is. going yeah. now. It yeah. came back to, oh, not UK living, but de- uh, really? Why can't they just call And it's big TV over the pond channels, as well, yeah. Like, ITV1 or... Uh, There's not a channel really actually called... Dave. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question mark in the end. Yeah, yeah, I hate it. Anyway. So big in the US as well? Or, big yeah, in the yeah, US. Yeah. But when Derek Akora became the breakout star of it, because he was quite, uh, you know, odd guy... Yeah. Um, it was set up within the most haunted family to get him out. So they set him up because 
go when they did live shows they were scripted so it was like event happened at 11 30 live okay. event ha- n- the event was never mentioned in the script but it was just event happens or incident happens okay so S- for drama and that and moving a used, picture or something is it yeah, or, yeah, yeah he okay. was used to turning up and there'd be some kind of script about how the night was going to go even if he didn't know all the details so one day they just set it up where kieran o'keefe the um ghost hunter of the time on the show basically set it up where he dropped all these fake clues about this character called Kaffer, Kiefer Kaffer or something. A very Ka- strange Kaffeter. name. Kaffeter, yes. It was weird. Billy Kaffeter. <laughs> Billy Kaffeter. He, he, he never lets the He was a wee lad. <laughs> so to boil it all down, basically, they dropped all these clues that he picked up on Derek and Cora. And then it was like, ha ha, we faked all that. Gear off our show. But basically, he was fed the exact same bullshit they would always feed him. But this time, Ooh. it was set up for him to fail. Oh, wow. So they tried yeah. to boot him out like the games animal guy on uh, Games Mask or whatever. It was. <laughs> was that exactly the oh, same spin off? That's far more oh, complicated. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That involved real ghosts. Oh, really? Yeah, it did. Uh, booze. Yeah. Booze. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes. And booze. There's a story. Yes. <laughs> See so, what I did there. So, like, ghost hunting is a bit like a murder mystery weekend with a vajazzle on it, really. I mean, it's. it's... <laughs> A little bit. It's pimped up. It's a mur- it's like a murder mystery night, like, except her. there is no murder, no mystery, and it's a lot of people being disappointed nothing happened for seven did, did hours. Did you get that a lot of that? Did you get a lot of people like, well, I paid good money yeah. for this? Really? Because people are expecting what they see on TV shows, on most haunts, where so, everything always happens every night they go out. So, yeah, because it's edited down and effectively made up anyway. Yeah, so... So in a way, it's like a production. The people are like, oh, okay, I know it might not be real, but I want you to make me feel like I've got my money's worth. Something. They like e- they yeah. e- the, the polar problems were either nothing happened and they upset one of their money back, mm. or oh, I'm going home with a devil and I'm going to poison my family with evil spirits and I'm upset and I, I, wow. I need protection. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like there's but uh, most of it in the middle was just that was yeah. a bit boring. How do you deal with that when somebody comes up afterwards and says, I'm now possessed by the spirit of Slep <laughs> and will go home and murder my family? Well, he- here's the problem. I never had to deal with that and I never had to deal with those kind of stories. I know mm. they happened elsewhere. Because yeah, there could be some legal ramifications with that. Like, well, the a, thing is... A you ghost told me to kill him. You don't <laughs> vet who turns up. I mean, yeah, well, so there might be people I mean, God, yeah. who yeah. shouldn't be there because, mm. f- for whatever reason, they, they shouldn't be in those circumstances. Um, again, I never had that dealt with, but I did meet some proper oddballs. In fact, what was interesting is that the more people I met, the more I realised most of them were just looking for answers to that eternal question is, what happens when we die? Mm. And there was one woman there who um, was on the night, I can't remember what the... I, I can't remember the building we were at. I want to say the uh, poor school in Stratford, which was the very first school set mm. up for uh, poor children to get an education. It was Dr. Bernardo's first project. Um, so that's oh, in Stratford. We did a ghost hunt there. And she was asking all the questions on the night, all the right questions. What does this do? How do you contact her? What does it mean? What is the afterlife like? Really into it. Mm. And then halfway through the night, like one, two in the morning, I'm out for a cigarette and I overhear her talking to her two f- friends. And basically she said, yeah, my husband's going to die in a few weeks of cancer. So I've come here to kind of look for answers and hope he goes to a better place. And at that point, it's not for me to go, you know, ghosts don't exist though, right? You know, Mm, this is all just a bit of fun and we're on a bit of... Because for her, that's hope. Yeah, some reassurance in some way. It's it's delicate. And that's why I was fascinated with ghost hunting, because it's a study of like anthropology of people and behaviour and the whole idea of ghost stories and yeah. what they mean. And that dovetails into how we preserve history in this country. So places like the Hellfire Caves, which I go on about a lot, are interesting because, yes, there's a perverse history to it. But then you have to look at it in context because it was a reaction to Catholicism that was burgeoning and being huge. And so they built this orgy palace underneath a church to have sex and take drugs and do debauched things. There was no black mass, right, but right. they they built that fear because they designed the tunnels to have that kind of oh dark magic, stay away. Because it was like a, effectively the Groucho Club for perverts. Right. I went to a spiritualism evening once. Oh god, that was. Is fun that not just one stamp yeah. for yes, two for no, or anything like that? Uh, it's not that far off, but it was yeah. it was all a guy. It was like a guy who did some stuff for the police lady. He was like the big one. They had a warm-up guy, an older one. And, yeah, he was a cold reader, yeah. effectively, you know, trying to uh, guess things and apply them to the audience. And he wasn't actually very good at it. And oh, it's no. really excruciating to watch somebody fail with that. Oh. oh, did you have a relative pass away recently? Yeah. There's like a 900-year-old woman in the audience. Yes, my husband died. Go. Oh, did, did, he, did he hear this... Have a little thing by the side of the bed that he he kept things in. He did, he did. No. Yeah. Did he have a, a little handkerchief in it? And did that handkerchief have his initial embroidered in the corner? So he goes, no, no, he didn't believe in handkerchiefs. <laughs> oh, it was, oh, no, it was oh, somebody it's somebody else. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. just somebody else. Oh, and it's yeah, yeah. like... 
Wow. See, yeah, it's interesting. Because be I've, 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 I've spent so many times with psychics that you see how the con works. And I'm sorry to say this publicly, but I think any psychics are out there is a con person. I generally right. think that it's a con job. Like hypnotist as well, would you say Hypnotism that? Hypnotism is a completely different yeah. tool. Right. Spiritual, I think it's still like the... So being a psychic and talking to the dead is is corrupting memories of your nearest and dearest yeah. for yeah. light entertainment purposes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and financial gain. And financial <laughs> gain. And mm. you just got to that point where it's like, mm. I felt bad. The one thing I didn't like doing psychic science was engaging and promoting the psychics because I was there going, you know, I'm the skeptic on the show, so I'm going to be the middle ground and keep things rational. And then here's Derek Akora, who's about to talk bollocks for 15 minutes. And mm. I see, and I have a personal grudge against them. Because this goes back to when I was yeah. 15. It doesn't come across that way. <laughs> no, it, I'll tell you why. It was because when I was 15, I was a massive hypochondriac. I've always had a problem with my health, and hypochondria does not help that. And so a friend of mine, um, his name was Craig, he died of meningitis. And it was the first friend I had who was my age, who died. And it didn't really hit me properly, but he was alive one day and then dead the next. And what happened is he got the meningitis, the bruising, the blood clots. A blood clot went from his leg to his head, killed him when it clotted his brain. So Ooh. it was shocking. And then my mum went on a night out with Craig's mum to go to a spiritualist. And that night, the spiritual was like, oh, I'm getting this ghost. I'm getting this Craig. Does this Craig mean something to you? And... Craig, you know, she's there. She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what's going on? Oh, well, he's saying he's happy now and the pain's gone. Does does a pain at the back of the leg mean anything to you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm getting this pain at the back of my head. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, well, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'll leave that with you now. Go in peace. She was kind of happy and distraught at the same time mm -hmm. because, you know, she's been reminded that her son died in a very painful, really unpleasant, sudden way. But she's also happy that he's now moved on. He's there in spirit. Fast forward a few years, I think, and like the local paper had an expose on that psychic because he was doing a thing called hot reading. Now, cold reading is where I'll look at you and I'll yeah. presume things based on generalizations okay. where I'll say, so, you know, you'd have someone you'd lost in your life, really. Was yeah, it close yeah. to you? Was it a family member? Or okay. they, you know, all that kind of stuff. I like guess, leading questions. And yeah, yeah, that yeah. You fill in the gaps yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. to make it feel like I'm being it was, more accurate. It was a male, wasn't it? No. Hot reading <laughs> yeah. is when I know stuff about you. Okay. And the reason why this psychic was so good was because hot reading is where I needed the research. And people would write letters to him and say, if you ever come to Birkenhead, please do a psychic reading because I'd love you to get in touch with my son, Craig, who died of meningitis. He had a blood clot that went from his legs oh, to his brain. Oh, there we go. And so when you go on tour, they flip through all the things. They go, who bought a ticket? Who's going to be in the oh. audience? Who's written a letter? And they, they do that thing. And that was when I think it was all like, that's a terrible, horrible, nasty yeah, job yeah. to have. They um, also record... Uh, people in the queue. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Because oh, wow. when you're queuing up to see a spiritualist, it's all like, oh yeah, I hope to hear from my uncle Potato who went and hit yeah. the fortune or whatever. And of course, they're recording it. You're listening in. Right, he's got an uncle Potato. Wow. He's in the fortune there's, somewhere. I wonder if there's like people in the audience planted as well. Like, Probably. Like, like, you think you have oh. a conversation with somebody yeah. who's They do planted. that. They send people yeah. into the audience to chat. In oh, the and foyer. then they'll probably be one of the ones as yeah. well that they might be... The An best, actor or something, it's like... The best story yeah. I ever heard on this was uh, one Haley told me, who I do that Spooktator podcast where me and we talk about ghost news. But um, she said... No, so Psychic Sally, who's aggressively litigious, a Ooh. horrible person with horribly, the, horrible family The members. fantastic uh, Psychic Sally, a who brother. is a real psychic yeah, and we all love her. The gifted yes. Psychic Sally. Right, okay. She does this thing where she goes, um, if you want to speak to a loved one, put a picture or um, a card or a note in this bowl... And then oh, the we should show, totally we'll do this. I wish I, yeah, I could, we can't do this now, can we? Somehow. So mm. someone in the audience yeah. got the wrong end. Throw in a bowl. Yeah. Got the wrong end of the stick. So rather than filling out a note of their loved one, she put her details down, thinking, "Oh, it, they'll call me out." So I put uh, her name, yeah. her problem, put it in the bowl. Anyway, psychic Sally starts going. I'm getting this. Tiffany coming through. She's on the other side, oh, oh, and no. she's got financial problems. And Tiffany's in the audience going, "No, that's me, and I'm very much alive." And oh, all this no. kind of stuff. So <sighs> cut her out that way. Wow. Bloody, uh, what surprises me, especially with the spiritualists, was how far they will go into something you wouldn't think they would touch with a barge pole. Because the um, starting up guy from the one I went to wasn't very good. Um, at one point, a lady in the audience stands up and says, which was, and this was a big thing in the newspapers locally at the time, oh, my grandson who has just been born died in the hospital. And some people are saying, oh, it was a mistake on the mm. nurses or something happened to him. And they're covering it up and saying he died of um, natural causes. What, what's true? Right, and you're like, wow, this old guy that goes, he ain't gonna touch that with somebody else's yeah, barge pole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He didn't. He immediately went, 
yeah, th- yeah, there's something bad happened there. You need to look into it. Yeah, because I'm not like, lo- yeah. Whoa! Um, although I heard a story from uh, a magician called Paul Zanon who had a oh, great story. Oh, yes, I know Paul Because <laughs> he likes to expose psychics, fair enough. And he said he went to Edinburgh one year because there was a Scouse psychic, and I can't remember his name now. But Paul was sat at the back, and apparently for the hour, this psychic was getting nothing. Everything was wrong. Everything was out of order. It was just an embarrassing. He said it was an embarrassing. Gone in his earpiece. Yeah, he said it was an embarrassing <laughs> hour until the very end, where after yeah. struggling with the audience to get something, he goes, "Oh," and, I'm, and he goes to one woman, "Oh, um, did your husband die of cancer?" And she went, "Yeah." And he went, "Yes," like that oh, to oh. kind of imply that I oh, got one. You know, <laughs> Jesus. It's Whoa, terrible. Cancer. Terrible. Yes. You know, so. Oh my God. It's like I have. I, I know psychics who are very nice people and, you know, humanistically, yeah. I have nothing with them, but their job is vile. Mm-hmm. I hate it. Is there a, like a, a pinnacle location in the world of ghost hunting that is like the shrine for everyone that they want to hit? I mean, yeah, but it's like, so like ghost this. hunters create their own mythology and their own interests. Right. So you could argue that. Let's say 100 years ago, everyone would want to go to Borley Rectory, which is the most haunted house oh, in Britain. Yes. But that got knocked down and then turned into, yeah. it got burned down, all this stuff. And then you got, oh, well, I want to go to the Amateurville house. But people don't realise the Amateurville house was a set and the real house wasn't where they filmed it. So it just looks similar. But that. Right. So they picked their meccas. But now, because of shows like Most Haunted, there are venues that people go to because it has all the press. And at the moment in the UK, there's one famously called 30 East Drive. Have you uh, heard of that? I've heard of this, yes. It's I don't know any details. North but... London. Ooh. But to boil it all down, it's it's got this ghost called the, the Black Monk, Monk of Pontefract, right? Mm-hmm. And there's been ghost hunting shows, and they've all filmed stuff there, and they've all seen dark spirits and evil things in the background. But because of these shows drumming up the mythology of this venue, now all the ghost hunting groups want to go there. Okay. And, uh, so there's a lot and, of media then. Well, I mean, I got into a really uh, awkward discussion with a comedian called Ian Boldsworth, you know, who uh, does the Parapod with uh, Barry Dodds. At the time, there's a news story coming about East 30 East Drive, and I said, it's exploitative. You know, it's exploitative that, you know, all these people are being used for basically a con job. And then Ian got in touch with me on Twitter to say, well, actually, it's a very poor part of the country, and this goes back into tourism in the local area. So we, us going there and us filming there is good for the local community. And I was like, uh, yeah, but at the same time, it's a con job, and mm. it's kind of hard to defend the con job, even though it might be ultimately putting something back into the community. I would like to see mm. evidence of that. But yeah, at the same yeah. time, it's like that house is privately owned. And if allegedly, allegedly, it's owned by a company that also owns uh, the company that makes Most Haunted. So in some points... <sighs> And where did Most Haunted do their live Halloween special one year where all these things were thrown and knives were thrown and he was pushed down the stairs and everyone saw a demon and all this stuff? Sounds like Ghost Watch. Yeah. I mean, you look at Ghost Watch and that show, that's the template for every show that followed, except the difference is Ghost Watch was a drama written and scripted. Yes. And then Most Haunted was wow. uh, what Most Haunted is. Wow, oh, ghosts. Hell. But um, I haven't done a ghost in a while and it's a shame because yeah. I do miss it. I'd yeah. like to go back and do we some should, more. We, should, uh, we nearly did one, uh, film one, didn't we? But yeah, I'd like to just yeah. do one anyway. I think it would be quite fun. Bosch uh, and special, see if we can sort it out to Halloween yeah, this year. Yeah. yeah, we can do. Um, I have a set of standard questions that we want to try and ask everyone. Ask okay. Me, but we don't have time. Oh, <laughs> good. Unless you can quick fire the answer. Quick fire them, go on. Um, most famous person you've ever met? Uh, John Carpenter. Oh. Met him in LA at uh, Virgin Media Records, Ooh. made a record, and he was buying his own DV- films on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> okay. seems, seems yeah. they live for um, years. Have you ever been in a local newspaper? Yeah, I won the Pepsi Movie Challenge at Butlins in like 1990. When was the Italian football? 1990. That's when I won that. Most embarrassing situation you've ever been in other than this? Uh, every episode of Bar <laughs> ever. <laughs> and if it was your last night on earth, what would you do? Oh, I'd just get stoned and watch Ghostbusters. Has the Ghostbusters thing come as a result oh, no, of I'm going to go around to Paul's and join yeah. him for that. If that no, did, did you like Ghost before Ghostbusters? Like, yeah, I had a kind of thing. dark imagination as a kid. Yeah. But when I saw the trailer for Ghostbusters, and more importantly, the logo, whatever it was about that logo, mm. really drew me in. Oh, right. And then I saw a trailer on Going Live of this famous scene where Slimer hits Peter. And I was like, I have to see this. And that's kind of it. It was like, for when people talk about Star Wars or Star Trek in that way, that's what Ghostbusters is for me. Okay. So yeah. and We did have a quick Dear Barshans. It's very, very quick. Cool. Cool. Yeah, far away, far Here, away. Here's the tune. Dear Barshans. We need that on the end. Sometimes there's like too much production. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's that? Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, this is a real simple one from uh, Nicholas Jones. I am a YouTube nobody, and I was wondering if I could come along and uh, attend a shoot of, of Bastion. So there we go. I think we, that was a general question that we wanted to ask. Can we just invite strangers along to this? Well, usually we just drag off the street. Yeah. That's how I got this. I want to get yeah. Paul just happened to be walking. Paul, come yeah. on. Get the lasso. <laughs> yeah. I want to invite Derek Okoro on now, actually. Oh. And you. And have a, like, a face off. I've just remembered something about Derek Okoro. Many years ago, I knew some students who were doing like uh, comedy podcasting and they interviewed Derek Okoro. And they turned the mics on before, and so it was all up and running. They're right outside the door. And they suddenly hear, oh, what's going on now? God, I don't know if these fucking kids are a waste of fucking time. Oh, rah, 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 like that. And it's just, you got to do it. All right, all right. Wow. Hello, lads, you all right? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. And they're like, they literally recorded it all and put the whole thing out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. God. Brilliant. Um, Good. But we are hoping to have a form where people can apply to have slots to come on here because as we found out from Paul, like, we could probably delve into this and maybe have a follow-up to this because there's probably, mm. I reckon, so much more we could yeah, talk about. So, I've got yeah. like the footage, the story of when we were conned on the tour. I've got Ooh. all the stuff. I've got when Derek and Cole broke up my relationship. What? I've what? Got, wow, yeah. with a ghost or... <laughs> you, I, that would have been more, that would have been more, yeah, concrete a relationship you broke I think. up a relationship oh god complicated what okay. else happened uh, when I went to see the Ghostbusters firehouse all that kind of stuff when I lived I've been dream. to the one in New York the, the fire because it's actually still yeah. a le legitimate fire station isn't it's it it's just been yeah. given a multi-million dollar makeover to improve it and keep oh, really? it going because it was nearly going to be uh, uh, taken out of service oh wow. wow quick note on that it's one of the first responders to 9-11 because it wasn't mm. too far away from it and oh. when you go in there's a big wall that they have with uh, things they rescue from 9-11 just like wallets and money and pictures and there's just like big kind of yeah. tapestry of it's really small as well isn't it it's tiny yeah, yeah, yeah. but they yeah. do have the Ghostbusters 2 logo on the inside of the building they have it hung up on the yeah. wall inside. and it's something on on the ground outside sprayed I think it's uh, a logo sprayed yeah. in the ground yeah, yeah, it's yeah. funny the, the people who live in that firehouse do embrace that movie wholeheartedly right. so they all invite people in and they have a little laugh it's nice Yeah, it's a great thing awesome so, I, I think um, we should do cons if we bring you back on with the sounds of it, that sounds like quite a good con story. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, the whole I mean, is the whole business a con? Depending on your belief system, yes or no. Ultimately, it was kind of like living the dream for me, and it scratched an itch. And ultimately, it's like I'm a much better me mental health person now. We could start our own con, con, con. I mean, don't mention it on live, though. This is the kind of thing you do con, off. Con, con. <laughs> Buy a ticket and we guarantee you this event will not take place. No <laughs> refunds. Con. Oh, no. Yeah. It's a con, con. So, like, this fake thing will definitely end up happening. But you won't come because you'll think it's fake. Yeah, because yeah, so there'll be no one in attendance. Because <laughs> this recursive oh. problem. Yes. Wow. So, uh, obviously, Paul uh, has a po podcast called The Cheap Show. Do you still do the Spooktator as well? Spooktator's changing format. We're going to make it monthly. But, yeah, okay. Spooktator's the podcast we do about the supernatural. Mm -hmm. We talk about the news of the supernatural and stories and kind of, like, shorticalize some of the stuff we get. Yeah. And yeah. Cheap Show's Cheap Show, a yeah. weekly slice of tat and madness with two guys who should know better. All right. Well, yeah. thanks for coming along, Paul. No doubt we'll have... Uh pull back again yeah. I really want to hear the follow up to that <laughs> it's some real it's some real meat to get off them bones oh yeah uh, and, and some information yeah yeah yeah. that was that was a disturbing culinary um, so I'm not going to yeah, do yeah. that just, just, just yeah. wrap it up just, just hungry yeah. and on that bombshell <laughs> thanks Paul <laughs> thanks, at man. Paul Gannon show or at the cheap show pod see I'm promoting myself there you go I'm getting out of here bye everyone bye everyone bye